But the, the reason why this came up and why everybody's been talking about names again is because the the darling has returned and he's un, and he's using the same name and the same face. Yes. Johnny Gargano came back to wrestling. Oh, joy, oh, bliss. The business has been saved. And he's using his the name he was using there before. Well, imagine that. I mean, I know it's not out of the bounds of possibility they would change it after five years or whatever. But for whatever reason, they seem to like this guy. And for the kind of people who like that kind of thing, I guess he's the kind of thing those people like. But... Obviously, this is the furthest thing from a game changer in any wrestling war that Johnny Gargano, Johnny Same Face, no Mrs. Same Face with him this time, but Johnny Same Face has returned to entertain us with his generic build, his diminutive body, his pale complexion, his undemonstrative face, and his general overall silly demeanor. <laughs> oh, wow. Yep. Cleveland's uh, favorite hometown uh, wrestler. He's Did, back. Do you he's remember the... when, it, when he was trying to, he and, and Mrs. Same Face were trying to keep old Dexter Loomis from hooking up with old Indy Hartwell and he put on a scuba suit and a fake shark skin or shark fin to, uh, to scare him off the beach? Ah, ah yes, peak NXT. That's some <laughs> storytelling, let me tell you. So... It, I know there's a segment of the audience that appreciates his technical brilliance in the ring, even though he's bland, expressionless, uh, personalityless, and couldn't sell pussy on a troop train, much less a ticket to a wrestling match. But uh, can't we all agree and uh, that it's uh, they're going a little too far on Twitter on so when this was headlines and it was Johnny Gargano, it's like some. It was like Cena's come back full time. Or my God, here's Steve Austin in his prime. Are they going a little a little over uh, overboard on this? Just this? I know he's a Triple H guy, and that's probably why he sat at home and did his daddy thing with his new baby and just waited, figuring, well, fucking Vince is older than I am. He'll die eventually. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. I I mean, there's a I guess there is a, a certain subset of uh, WWE fans who remember Johnny from, you know, all of his fine work in NXT being the, what was he, the, the first wrestler in NXT to win the uh, so-called Triple Crown uh, tag team, NXT heavyweight and North American titles. And That's, I understand he was also at one time the nicest guy in prison. That was a bigger honor. Absolutely. He got a, a key from the warden for that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's somebody who, I, I guess, looked favorably upon by a uh, new management and is being brought in and is looks like he's getting uh, paired up and resuming old business with uh, Austin Theory. Or Theory. <laughs> Well, and there's, that's another thing. God damn it. Theory, they started pushing as a phenom. Vince, he was Vince's handpicked, you know, protege. Vince was going to be his mentor. That's how they were giving him the rub on television. They put a belt on him. Then they took the belt off of him. Then now he's been floating around with other, now it, he's going to be, working with a guy that technically, yes, the guy can perform all the moves, but he has indie-style matches, which is the last thing that Theory needs to get in the habit of. He's, what, a foot shorter than Theory is? Mm -hmm. Compare the physiques and tell me that it doesn't look like a bodybuilder taking his fucking, you know, diabetic nephew out for ice cream. <laughs> And this is going to be a competitive program thing between the theory needs to be in the mix with top guys in order not only to learn the style of working that the top guys there have, but also to be brought up in the people's eyes and in, in the, in the fans eyes as, as he's an upper echelon guy to mix with the top talent. 
Right. Instead of here, this guy just came back from his glorious run in NXT a year ago after he, his wife had a baby. Uh, right. And then, of course, keep in mind that uh, Theory is a holder of the MacGuffin known as Money in the Bank. And so he, <laughs> you know, he's got pretty much till WrestleMania to uh, pop that open. So, you know. But that's what I'm afraid of, because a lot of times I think that they justify what they do to themselves up there. So, well, he's got the money in the bank. That's his heat. And he can cash that anytime and boom, and we'll be right back to the. No, you won't be right back to the races. If the guy's been fucking around with fucking guys half his size, guys from NXT that are either not ready or goddamn aren't hadn't been presented at the level of the main roster talent. You know, if they, right now, from what I've seen on the A&E programs over the past week or so, I'd do something with Theory and Edge. Because hmm. Theory comes off to me as a guy, because now they've killed the Judgment Day, right? They took the whole reason for the group, as well as the spokesman, as well as the main event level star that gave the whole thing an era of credibility they took that out of it so fuck it poor Rhea put Edge with Theory Edge was a guy that had a dream to be a wrestler it looks like Theory's this good this young it means he's probably been applying himself for a while at least thinking about it mentally I've never met the guy don't know him but Edge was a guy that wanted to be a wrestler from a young age and, and sacrifice was willing to do everything it took and turned out to be a great performer and then uh, seems to be a person who would want to pass that on. He came off so likable. We'll talk about that later on in the biography special. So why not take a guy like that that's winding his career down over the next year and put him with a guy like Theory? Edge is, don't let him do the goddamn ladder, table, chairs, Ugh. baseball, bat fucking matches for either one of their sakes. Edge, because he's you know, bad neck and theory, because why? Um, but let them have a program and let Edge teach this guy in the ring in front of big crowds what timing is and, and how the top-level guys work there and how to feel crowds and milk shit. It, uh, give him a postgraduate education, and you'd be doing something positive for everybody. Yeah, well, that's entirely too logical, Jim. That's... Uh, logic is, uh, it ebbs and flows. It's a, quite a commodity in world well, wrestling entertainment. And I mean, I've watched, and we'll talk about SmackDown. I keep saying we'll talk about these. I swear we <laughs> will. I swear we will. But I'm trying to go back through my notes now and remember mm. if they told me anything on SmackDown about what Edge is even fucking doing. I can't even remember now this thing. I'm looking through these notes. Where's Edge? Where's Edge? I don't see any Edge. I think some, right. I've seen a lot of Edge on biography and on uh, Rivals. So the point is, uh, again, you know, they, they are on their own retrospective shows telling stories of how a guy that was more established worked with a guy that was on his way up and less established, and they both prospered because of it even more. And they're not doing that with the, the, the guys that they really want. They need to pick two or three guys that they really want to elevate as far as they possibly can and take care of them and put them in the ring against and with nothing but top other top talent and let them win more than they lose. And if anybody considers Johnny Gargano main event talent, the WWE universe, that is an indictment of the fucking WWE talent roster. 